Hey everyone, it's Lucy from KeyBeautyHarbor.com and today's video is all about my favorite topic, which is sunscreen. To me, it is the most important part of any skincare routine. I think that anything you're trying to do with your skin will be not as effective or potentially not effective at all if you're not protecting your skin from the sun. However, I also understand that there are some annoying parts about using sunscreen and some things that are just not as easy as we would like. After using sunscreen for years and years and years, every day, I have some tips and tricks for you to make it a little bit easier. So let's start. My first tip is to wear daily and just make it a habit. I know there's some debate online whether or not you should wear sunscreen when you're indoors or what if I work in a dungeon with no windows or how much light do my windows really let in, etc, etc. And we can debate until we're blue in the face. But to me personally, making it a habit is what works. If I'm used to putting sunscreen on in the morning, I'm always going to do that. It becomes an autopilot type of thing. I don't have to think about it. I don't have to worry about forgetting it. And if I think I'm going to be sitting at home all day, but I didn't put sunscreen on and then I decide to leave or I have to leave, whatever, I go get the mail, doesn't matter, I open the windows, I don't know, whatever happens, I at least have some sunscreen on in the morning if it was a habit versus potentially not making it a habit, deciding to skip it, and then ending up in the sun anyway. Tip number two is find a way to reapply sunscreen that you can live with. Ideally, of course, we are slathering cream on. That tends to be the best protection, but that's not always feasible, especially if you're a makeup wearer or if you just don't enjoy the aesthetics of putting on cream on your face after being outside or at work or whatever else and not as part of your morning routine. But there are some other options for your application. For example, there are sticks. I have a couple here. This is Make Prem. It is all mineral. This one is Ryrae. I can't actually remember what filters it has, um, but you can definitely look that up. I got this one from YesStyle. This one you can get on Amazon and other places. These are super easy to use. In my experience, they go well over makeup. I also really like the Cynic stick. I'm actually all out of that one, but I even use that one to reapply while we were out in a national park, in a cabin for a few days, and we were walking a ton. It was in the summer. I'm super fair. I would put a base layer of sunscreen in the morning and then used only the stick for reapplication, and I did not burn. So they do work. They look like that. And like this one is the Make Prem, and it doesn't have a white cast, at least on me and it's not greasy, and it doesn't smear makeup around as far as I can tell. Of course, I don't wear like a ton of really heavy makeup, but for what I wear, it seems to work fine. And then there are powders like this one. This one is the Can Make a Marshmallow Powder. It's not going to be enough protection, in my opinion, if you are going to go hiking in the middle of July, but if you're just leaving home from the office and you want to protect yourself a little bit extra for the drive home because again car windows especially the side ones are not usually treated for uva rays i think this is much better than not applying anything the next tip is to apply it to all areas that are exposed like your ears neck sides of the neck back of the neck if that's uh, exposed as well and around the eyes there are different formulas some might be irritating around the eyes but there are some that are not just experiment or read reviews, find something that works. This is also the reason why usually makeup products are not enough of an SPF protection, even if your foundation says that it has SPF 50. Typically, the recommendations online are to apply between a quarter to half of a teaspoon to the face and neck. A lot of it will depend on the size of your face, but still you wanna be applying a good amount. Most people are not applying that much in makeup and definitely not putting it on their ears neck, sides of the neck, back, etc, etc, around the eyes. So to me, any foundation with some SPF in it is an added bonus. Maybe it can help cover some skip areas because none of us are perfect. And when we apply sunscreen, we do tend to skip some spots unintentionally and maybe makeup can cover some of those, but I definitely would rely to that as your only means of sun protection. Next tip is not to forget the lips. Skin cancer can very much happen on the lips and the surgery is difficult and potentially disfiguring, but also you can get pigmentation on the lips as well. And of course, we don't want to prematurely age that area either. I remember a few years ago when I first started to worry about lip sunscreen, 
I just couldn't find anything that was aesthetically pleasing. Everything was super wide casted and you don't really want to put face sunscreen on the lips because the formula most of the time is not going to stick well there because the skin on the lips is just so different and you could get some weird tastes etc. But now they're really nice formulas for the lips. The ones I have here are both Japanese. This one is the Rotho Mentholatum. It's green tea. They also make unscented. This one really does smell like matcha. So if you don't like that smell, this isn't for you. But the formula is amazing. It is super creamy. Let's see, I'm almost out of it. It is super, super, super creamy. And it almost looks like lip gloss when you apply it because it's so glossy and nourishing. Super easy to apply. Just glides right on. And it's just so soft in a good way. I love it. It does have, if you go a little bit too intense with this, it can get a little bit of a, just a very subtle green tint to it. It's not super noticeable, but again, they make other scents of this, including an unscented one. So you can definitely find the one that you like. And then I have this one, also Roth and Mentholatum. It's their water lip. This one is tinted a little bit. It's not very obvious, honestly. I've had their untinted or clear, and then this, and there's not a ton of a difference between the two of them. It's not as creamy as that green tea or the matcha one that I showed, but this is more like normal lip balm, like regular chopstick, where the, the matcha one is just extra creamy somehow. This is more a typical chopstick, but they both work and neither of them have a white cast. Next tip is to protect your body and not just in the summer, not just on the beach. Body skin ages as well, wrinkles, gets hyperpigmented, and all of those lovely things that come with the passage of time, I try to prevent as much of that as I can. These are not going to be Korean products or Asian ones, although they're probably some alternatives, but my favorite way to protect body skin not on the beach is to use UPF clothing. UPF is kind of like SPF rating, but for fabrics. My favorite brand is Cooley Bar. This is not a sponsored video, although I wish Cooley Bar, if you want to send me stuff, please, let's go. Cooley Bar makes stuff like this. These are driving gloves and they are UPF 50. They have little uh, traction pads here, so you're not sliding around on the steering wheel. They're really nice and light. I don't get sweaty in them, even in the summer. I keep these in my car at all times, and if the weather isn't cold enough for just normal gloves, I will wear these. And they make different kinds. They have ones with full fingers. They have these ones. They have different variations. I've actually tried cheaper brands from Amazon of driving gloves, and definitely not at all the same experience. Then I have sleeves and these can be your driving sleeves or gardening sleeves. These are also Cooley Bar. I have the ones that cover the palm. They also make ones that just go to here. They have all the different kinds. These ones are made with fabric that feels very much like cotton but it has zinc somehow worked into it and it doesn't wash out. Cooley Bar clothing I think were the first ones to have the seal of approval from the American Skin Cancer Society or Foundation so they're definitely legit and again they just feel really nice because I am used to UPF things feeling like swimsuit material and that's not something I want to wear outside of the beach but these fabrics are really nice. Probably goes without saying that a hat can also help protect your face as well as your head, your scalp can also burn and the sun isn't that great for the hair. I also like just getting UPF clothing that are actual garments, not just the sleeves. I have a couple of these. These are also from Cooley Bar and they have this magnetic closure at the neck and it goes all the way to here on me so it covers your neck really well and then the sleeves have little thumb holes so the sleeves cover all the way like this. And this is, again, that nice fabric that feels very much like cotton. Um, I think it's some sort of bamboo blend, but don't quote me on it. I'll put a link to those in the description box. I have two of these. I have this one in the light blue. And even in the summer, honestly, it is just, it's not hot. I know it might look like it's hot because it's long sleeves, but it really isn't. And honestly, it's so much easier and faster just to put something like this on than to try and slather sunscreen all over the exposed areas of your body before taking your toddler for a walk, which is my main reason for being outside. Next tip is to remove your sunscreen properly. A single foaming cleanser, a traditional one, isn't always enough. I prefer double cleansing, which is using 
a cleansing oil or a balm and then doing a foaming cleanser. But if you're not into that or if you have children who resist that like mine do, there are some other options. They're really good two-in-one cleansers like this one. This one's actually empty. My second grader really likes this one. I have another bottle for her. This is the Axis Y Quinoa One Step Balance Gel Cleanser. It's super easy for her to use because it has a little pump. Very, very gentle, but it removes sunscreen and everything else in just one step. Plus, again, because the little pump, she can use it herself. She could even before she was in second grade, so that works out. Or another option is something like this. These are proper recipe oil cleansing pads. They're these really big, oh, there we go, soft pads saturated in a special formula that's meant to dissolve things like sunscreen and makeup. And again, it's just very, very easy. You don't even have to use a foaming cleanser after these, although I prefer to, but if your kid doesn't want to get sunscreen off any other way, this might be a good compromise. My next step is to let your sunscreen fully dry before doing a makeup, especially mascara, which is not a tip I've seen anywhere before, and I discovered this through trial and error. I have noticed lately that my mascara, which usually doesn't run and doesn't smudge and doesn't do anything, it's amazing, it's Heimish, I will get little like black dots here sometimes or here and through some observations and trying different things I've discovered that if I put on a sunscreen that's a pretty rich moisturizing formula and then don't let it dry all the way and then put mascara on as I blink some of that richness of the sunscreen must be grabbing onto the mascara and like leaving these weird things under there. But if I let it fully set in while I maybe do something else, like get dressed or whatever, and then put mascara on, then that's not a problem. And it's always a good idea to let your sunscreen set in before you apply anything like foundation or powder, because the purpose of sunscreen is to form a film on the skin that's going to protect you from the rays, and then putting on powder or anything else before it's fully done forming that that film can disturb the sunscreen and then potentially affect its protection. If you don't love the formula and you don't have friends that could potentially benefit from the sunscreen who maybe have a different skin type from you or just different preferences, then I recommend instead of wasting or throwing away the product, using it on your feet, like the tops of your feet. I actually had a mad sun tan on my feet in the shape of my sandals a couple of years ago and it took forever to come off. I never thought about putting sunscreen on the tops of my feet when just walking, especially because it wasn't summer. It just didn't cross my mind. But through weeks and weeks of walks, uh, there was enough damage there and I had really funky tan lines on my feet. So definitely protect your feet and if the formula isn't ideal for your face, you can try it on your neck, which works really well for me with more moisturizing sunscreens that are too heavy for my combination skin on the face, but they work well on the neck. Um, or you can use it on the hands if you don't want to do the driving gloves. I prefer the driving gloves. But yeah, just, just find alternative areas on the body to use it that are still exposed to the sun. And my last but not least and perhaps the most important tip is to do what you can but then beyond that just relax. I don't think there is any reason to be neurotic about sunscreen and sun protection and going to extremes like drawing all the blinds and closing all the windows and never being outside between the times of 10 and 2 or whenever the sun's supposed to be the most potentially harmful. I think it's really important to live our lives and enjoy it. I think it's important to be outside and be with family and friends and just have a life outside of sun protection. So do what you can, find ways to reapply, but honestly, don't let that stop you from just experiencing life and enjoying it. Bodies are meant to be lived in and not just looked at. So if that extra three hours outside with your friends gives you a couple of sunspots, I mean, to me, it's probably worth it. Well, thank you very much for joining me today. I hope this was useful. And again, like I said, please give me your best tips because I'm always, always, always learning. Tell me your favorite sunscreen or if you tried any UPF clothing, or maybe there are some brands that are more affordable than Coolie Bar that you can recommend. I'd love to know. You can find me on Instagram at kbdhobbit, my blog, kbdhobbit.com, and in my Facebook group, Korean Beauty Fanatics. I will see you in my next video. And until then, please remember to always listen to your skin. Thank you so much.